Hi everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here with another Valentine's Day adventure where I want to use some of these sweetheart candies to dye some yarn. Now I just started a previous experiment um, hand painting some yarn with some sprinkles and these candies. But I realized that these candies have food coloring all the way through. They're not just coated with a white center. So I thought that that would make them a good candidate for some low immersion dyeing. Here in my dye pot I have 200 grams of yarn, 100 grams of Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn, and 100 grams of Stroll fingering weight yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I pre-soaked these yarns in some tap water with three tablespoons of white vinegar in this pot. So all of that is, is present in here. And so I'm gonna bring this up to just below a simmer, and then we're gonna add our Sweetheart's candy to the bath to see what happens. I am filming this experiment while I am in the middle of the other experiment with the hand painting where I know that the candies aren't going to dissolve completely. So I'm curious, um, as sort of like a Halloween throwback, what will happen. Things are heating up over here. So let's start off slowly and add one of each color to each side. And I am going to reduce the heat. So that's blue. Let's add a green, an orange, and a yellow. Even though I guess that yellow technically will add one more yellow. Making sure these are all submerged. Oh, interesting. That pink is getting a lot paler. Funny, because I really, really thought that, you can see that over here as well, that the pink is actually starting to turn almost whitish. Um, and, but also leave some color on the yarn. That's really interesting to me, because I thought that when I saw some of these broken, let's see if I can find a good broken one in the bowl. And I've seen some broken sections. It looked like that they had a lot of color throughout the hearts, which is why I decided to try adding them in this way. But look at this purple. It's also, whoa, cool. You see that heart in Left Behind? <laughs> that is pretty cool. <laughs> But man, this is looking really, really white already. So now I'm really curious because, all right, let's see if I could break one of these in half. Okay, yeah, I just shattered, I shattered an orange one and it has the same color on the inside as it does on the outside. So now I'm really curious if the colors are just being sucked out or what. Let's try moving that blue on. No, that one still looks really blue. Maybe it's just the way, oh, that is cool, you guys. Gee, I really, really don't know. All right, but I think it is time for us to add some more candy hearts to this setup. What do you think? Try to add them all around. Move the yarn. Get things on the inside. I'm using one, let me see how, uh, how big was this package? One six ounce package of hearts today. Mm -hmm. 
So depending on if the hearts are actually on the yarn or if they're beneath the yarn might determine how much the different colors spread out. Okay, that's about half of them in our half of the, the sweet heart candies in our soup right now. Now I'm gonna let this go a little bit before I move them around a bit more. Because I'd like to try to get the bright colors on the yarn itself versus just going into solution and getting more of a pastel. But I think that this is gonna be really, really fun. I am gonna let this go for, hmm. I'm gonna reduce the heat a tiny bit more. I'm gonna let this go for five minutes and then we'll come back and think about rotating our yarns around a bit more. Five minutes had passed, so I am going to rotate my yarns and whoa! Look at that color. Rotate the yarns around. So we can add some color to some, maybe some of our less colored sections. So while today's experiment is absolutely food safe, I'm using candy and vinegar. I am using my Dye Pot Weekly Pot, which means that I am using the utensils that I use along with this pot just to uh, keep everything safe and consistent. I didn't want to use my food safe utensils inside my non-food pot. Do, do, do. All right. And the rest of these candies. And now I will come back in about Oh, I'll come back in about 20 minutes and we'll see what's happening with our candy. 20 minutes have passed and you can see that some of the hearts have actually dissolved. The rest, well that one's getting crumbly. Some of the other ones closer to the surface aren't quite all the way dissolved, but I think I am going to turn off the heat and let this sit for maybe another 10 minutes and see if those get a lot closer. So the pot is still nice and hot and slowly our candies are all dissolving. So I'm gonna just go ahead and let the yarn sit in here until it looks like most of the candies have dissolved and then we will transfer these yarns into some warm rinse water to help all the sugar and everything else kind of rinse off the yarn. So while I'm letting that cool, here is the hand-painted experiment that I have going on. So I'm really excited to see what the difference is between this sprinkle plus heart experiment and this immersion sweetheart experiment. The pot has cooled a bit. It's still quite warm, but I'm ready to transfer our Valentine's Day candied yarn into a bucket of warm tap water. So I am just gonna remove, ooh, that's warm. Okay, I'm not gonna squeeze it out too much because it is warm, but check out those colors and place it directly into the warm water. But look at how, ooh, hot, 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 hot. Look at how translucent that water is. I mean, you've got a lot of dissolved candy and stuff in there. The rationale for transferring the yarns into warm water is so that if there are any solid candies, the warmth will help them dissolve. Um, there's going to be a lot of rinsing that we need to do because there's a lot of stuff that had dissolved in along with the candies. But I am going to let this soak for a bit and start to cool before we move into a sink to start washing the yarn. The water is still slightly warm, but I'm ready to start really rinsing and washing this yarn. Now, even as the rinse bath looks a little cloudy, you'll see that all of the color is in the yarn. And even with the water that was remaining in the pot, like that, that was pretty clear as well. 
So I'm really excited that the candy dissolved as well as it did. And just look at these colors. This is a very, very happy, happy yarn. Now, I will want to do a few more rinses than normal because in addition to, well, not that we're really seeing any excess food coloring rinse out, but there is sugar and a lot of other compounds that are present in here right now that we would like to rinse out. Things that won't stick to the yarn and things that we don't want to end up with an icky sticky mess. So I am going to continue rinsing. I might use soap a second time, but the next time you'll see the yarn, it'll be dry. Here are the finished dry yarns. We space dyed 100 grams of 100% wool yarn and then 100 grams of sock yarn that is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. The colors are a bit more intense on the sock yarn, and, but in the, and the patches also are mostly smaller because the colors struck pretty much wherever they touched the yarn, and the colors seem to have spread out a bit more on the wool yarn, which is consistent from what we've seen with these yarn bases. I dye with these two yarns together all the time. But I think that the final colors on these yarns are really, really pretty. I am really impressed that on the wool yarn we see discrete yellow, orange, pink, blue, and even some purple patches. And we see these colors on the sock yarn as well. I think that I was half expecting for the these candy hearts since they're pretty big with food coloring all the way through i think i was expecting that the colors would dissolve and sort of mix a bit more in the pot so we would sort of see a blend of the colors on the yarn but instead we have these pastel and in some cases slightly bright colors but pastel sections of color and i think if i was going to name it I would call it something like unicorn breath because it's just like a little hint of a rainbow that makes you think that there's something magical around. I am really, really impressed that we got as much color as we did from one package of candy hearts and that the resulting colors really don't feel muddy at all. They're pastel but not muddy and blended. And I think that these could turn into a really, really fun project. And, or they would actually be really, really fun to mix with a like extremely bright rainbow yarn to have some fun light and dark contrast. There is one more thing I need to say about these yarns. I do not think that I rinsed these yarns as much as I did the yarns that I showed earlier today. I think that because I was dyeing them in a dye pot, I felt like that everything had a chance to dissolve. The yarn is really soft, but almost feels slightly stiff. Like you can feel a difference between this yarn and some of the other yarns that I've dyed. So even though I am filming the conclusions now, and you can see that the yarn has lots of drape and it's really, really soft, I do think that I am going to put these into a rinse bath and not even use any more soap, but just rinse them a couple times to make sure everything is out of the yarn. Although it's funny, now that I've been handling the yarn a bit uh, for filming this video, it doesn't feel stiff to me at all anymore. So maybe it was just from the air drying, but still as a precaution, I am gonna put these through a couple more rinses and hang them up to dry again. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you for watching this second Valentine's Day yarn dyeing special, where we dyed 200 grams of yarn with some candy hearts. I think that this technique is a lot of fun and despite my past reservations for dyeing yarn with candy, I think that you might want to pick up some clearance candy hearts today and tomorrow if, they, if there happen to be some at your store to try this out yourself. I did this second experiment because I had so many doubts that hand painting yarn with these candy hearts would be an absolute flop. 
but make sure you check out the first Valentine's Day special that I released this morning because I tried these hearts in a more hand-painted jelly roll steamed in the microwave technique and also got some really spectacular yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you for watching this video.